You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 18th of April and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic news was US inflation with the headline print coming in at 8.5% in line with market estimates. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy, rose 6.5%. It may be okay to exclude certain metrics from core inflation, but it's incredible how much these have increased, with food up 1% month on month and energy up a massive 11% month on month. It's important to remember that these are real costs of living for the average American. One of our preferred measures, which excludes a range of transitory items such as airline tickets and used cars, stabilised at 0.4% month on month or 3.4% year on year. The UK also released their inflation print, with prices increasing 1.1% month on month in March, or 7% year on year. Now turning to Australia, Australian employment data came out this week and was largely in line with expectations, with the unemployment rate coming in at 4% versus 3.9% expected. However, when looking at the detail, unemployment was about 3.95%, so was below 4% and was one of the lowest recorded data points on record. In New Zealand, the central bank decided to raise rates by 50 basis points. This is in line with the market expectations as the New Zealand government tries to get inflation under control. In key equity news, IGO, the Australian listed lithium, nickel and copper miner, bid again for Western Areas. Western Areas operates a large nickel mine. The revised bid is at $3.87 per share after the independent expert determined the original bid undervalued the business. Continuing with the M&A theme, the Morrison Consortium, which includes Brookfield and Commonwealth Super, appears to have tied up Unity Wireless Group. The agreed terms appear to have landed at $5 per share or $3.6 billion for the Australian listed fibre provider. Email payments was also speculated to be in the throes of M&A. They confirmed that Bain Capital had approached them, however the talks had fallen over. Payments is an area under intense M&A scrutiny, with the afterpay acquisition by Square fresh in all investors' minds. Finally, NetWealth reported net inflows of $2.6 billion. This was below consensus, but is somewhat understandable given the heightened volatility we've seen in markets. What helped offset these lower flows was the higher cash balance, which is quite profitable for NetWealth. Looking to the week ahead, it's quite quiet on the economic front. We have the New Zealand inflation rate, where the market expects 7.1% inflation year-on-year, an acceleration from the December quarter print of 5.9%. In the US, we have reporting season starting, and it will be fascinating to watch how US companies are dealing with heightened inflationary pressures. The market will be focused on the ability to maintain margins given the intense cost pressure. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.